to UE5 BP Guru. Today, we're going to be taking a look uh, at finally choosing our encounter. Uh, so you should, when you open up your uh, event graph, if you've added the, uh, the output, you should have the return node automatically in there for you. Um, now, what we're going to be doing is um, we're going to be finding a Pokemon. That's, that's kind of the aim of today's episode, is to find the Pokemon we need. So to do that, we're going to need a few things. Um, the first thing we want to do is we're going to create a local variable. Uh, two of these are going to be uh, floats. So we'll add two in for floats, and then we need a third one that's going to be type name. We'll name these things as well. So for the first one, it's going to be sum of array. The next one is going to be the roll. And the third one is going to be um, chosen encounter. The first thing we want to do is take that sum of array and make sure it's empty. So very similar kind of process to what we've been doing before. We need that sum of arrays to be blank. That's what we need. Uh, the next thing we're going to add one more variable, but this is going to be a normal variable, and it's going to be uh, it's going to we're going to call it possible ring mom. We're also going to add this, by the way. I forgot to do this last episode. Put that gender into the Pokemon info um, and close that up because we shouldn't need any more of that as well. Um, <clears throat> this possible ringmon, we're going to do that from our uh, F possible encounters that we made before. And we're going to drag it out and then we're going to break it. Break that to show the possible encounters. But what we want to do is we want to um, set that as instance editable and expose on spawn. And the reason we want to do that is that if we click on our information here, if we we should be able to drop this down and we can now fill out that information with all the types of Pokemon. So if we said we want Bulbasaur, we want Charmander, and we also want Squirtle all to show up. And we're going to give ourselves a 0 0.3, 0 0.33 chance of those showing up. So there's a 1 in 3 chance you're going to get any one of the starters within this box. That's kind of what we're planning on doing with this. Um, and then we need to add that into a thing called values. And that just kind of adds all your values up together and produces them out into an array. Then we can do a for each loop, like so. We won't need a break for this one. Uh, and what we're going to do is we're going to set that as our sum of arrays uh, by adding them together. So we get our sum of array. We do a get. We do a add. And we add this to it. And then that becomes our sum of arrays. And what this will do is, however many Pokemon you have in there, so let's say you have, well, with our example we're doing now, we have three Pokemon. So it's going to do this three times, and at the end, you should have, with it being 0 0.33, you should have 0 0.99 at the end of it. Uh, then what we're going to do is we're going to get our roll, and we're going to set a roll. And that is going to be a random float in range. And we're going to say it's from zero to whatever our sum of array is. So you could have, in all honesty, you could have it that each one represents one. Um, you could have each one represent 10. It depends on how, like the bigger the number, the more chance it has of showing up. So the way Pokemon do it, if you want a very rare Pokemon, you would set that to as, as an example as one. And then you would set your more common Pokemon as like 30 or 40 or 50 and that one that has only a one has one in that many chance of appearing that's kind of the the gist of how it works uh so once we've set our role we're going to recopy this over here um like so and we're going to get the keys we're going to plug that in like so uh we're then going to run this 
through a hole in each loop, like so. Now, the next bit can be a little bit complicated, but what we're going to do is we're going to take this and we're going to do a find. And the name is this one here. So this is kind of roughly how it's going to look. So what this is doing is we're getting the keys of this. So the three we have entered in there, the three names. We're running it through a for each loop and finding these. And we're going to see if our roll, so whatever this ended up being, so that zero between sum of rays, we're going to check to see if it's in this roll. And then we're going to see if that find is greater to or equal to this. Uh, other way around, sorry. So you need to make sure they're the right way around. So that one goes in there, that one goes in there. So the find is equal or greater to the roll. And then we're going to do a branch check here. So plug this in and plug that in there. Uh, and if it's true, if it comes back true, we're going to set that as our chosen encounter. Uh, also, this actually needs to be with a break. This one does need to be a forge loop with break. Uh, so just plug, just change this one around because we actually want to break once we've found something. So bring that back up. Okay. And then what we're going to do is if we found a chosen encounter, this one will become that chosen encounter. So let's just bring it down a little bit just so it looks nice. There we go. And then we're going to whiz this one around to the break. Uh, let's get these all in position. There we go. Oh, okay. And um, if it's false, we take our roll and we minus it, subtract it by this uh, find. We take the roll, we minus the find, and then we set our roll again. And then we reset that roll. So that the next time it rolls, it has a better chance of finding something different. Uh, and once it's completed and we've run through all of this, uh, we can uh, do it, we can get our return node basically. So we don't want that plugged in there, we want it plugged in down here. And we can pick our chosen encounter. So I'm going to bring that down here. I think that looks a little bit better. It makes it looks like it makes a little bit more sense. And actually I have made a wee mistake here. It shouldn't be the role that comes into this. It should be the find. So actually that can go back up there. The find comes back in there. So we take the role and we minus the find, not the other role. Otherwise a role minus a role, it would just be zero. So that wouldn't make sense. So don't do that. Um, so that's kind of how it should flow. And um, to show this working, we'll do the same thing again. So we'll unplug this for a second. And we'll get a print string. Okay, and that print string will print us that name. And we'll do a delay. Delay of 0 0.2 seconds. And then we'll allow us and we'll unpause, unpause. Uh, timer by handle, and it's going to be the spawn timer, like so. And we'll compile. Let's press play, and we'll see if we find something. Let's just give it a go. There we go. Charmander's been found. That took a while that time. Charmander, we've got Charmander. And got Charmander again. Okay, please give me something other than Charmander. Charmander, oh God. Squirtle, there we go. We are finding some others. Um, see if we can find a Bulbasaur before we end this weird segment. Got a lot of Charm. There's Bulbasaur. So as you can see, we've got Bulbasaur Charmander. And one of them appeared actually a little bit faster than the other because of the, the times per roll. So we're getting all three of them. All three names are coming through, which is great. So we know that that's working. Now what will happen, this is where it's important that your data tables are set up correctly because that name will now go into here and we need to find it from this basic information. Another great way of testing that is literally just by saying, okay, I, I wish I hadn't delete that other thing, 
the um, print string. And uh, we'll only get this if we uh, found something. So we want to actually print string that. Um, but I'm also going to get a second one to say if we failed, we didn't find the name. Uh, no Pokemon found. Okay, so if that shows up, we know we have a naming issue. That's why we, we check this row not found as well. Because it's great if we start finding names, but if there's something we don't find, we need to make sure we know there's an issue. So that's why we do that. So again, it's just all about testing. I, I, I can't emphasize enough that testing is, is crucial for a game like this, because anything can go wrong. So it's good to test as you go along. So we've got Squirtle. So we found Squirtle's information. Great. Um, what else are we going to get? Going to give us anything else? Charmander, maybe? Bulbasaur? Oh, I didn't unpause the timer. That's why. So we're going to have to run in and out for a second and, until we get another name. Squirtle again. Come out. Go back in. Give me something else. Let's just make sure we are definitely out of the box. Charmander, there we go. We got Charmander's information. And if we go back in, we should hopefully get another one. Charmander again. Can we get Bulbasaur? I'd like a Bulbasaur. I mean, I want to know if we get a row not found or a Bulbasaur, I'll be happy. I'll know, I'll know we've technically tried to find all three. Give me Bulbasaur. Come on. Give me Bulbasaur. Squirtle again. Okay. This game doesn't want to play ball, does it? <laughs> Charmander. Oh, my God. Come on. Nope. Doesn't want to give it to me. Okay. Bulbs was clearly a lot rarer than the, the code says. But <laughs> there we go. We've got Bulbs. Great. So, so, again, at this point now, we know that um the game is finding the pokemon so a little bit similar to the last one what we need to do now is um so what we need to do is start setting information so we can delete that now and we can delete that. I'm pretty sure we don't even need to see that at this point. What I'm going to do is I'm going to set up the functions that we, we're going to need. And then we're going to set that up in the next episode. Um, because I feel that will probably take a full episode to do, to be honest. And I don't want to miss anything. I don't want to skip ahead or anything. So the functions we're going to create are set encounter info. Uh, we're going to roll IV, roll final stats, roll move slot, and then last but not least, we're going to set, um, we're going to start the, the battle off, but we need to obviously do a few other things before that, but that's kind of how the flow will, will run. But if we go to the event graph, let's pull these out in order. Uh, we're going to set that up. And for the first one, we're actually going to put an input in. We, do, we don't necessarily need to do this because we can just call the information. But we're going to get the uh, Ringmon uh, Pokemon uh, in base info. That is right, isn't it? Nope, it's not. Uh, F. Pokemon basic information. Sorry, I clicked the wrong one. And we should be able to plug that straight in. And we'll call this uh, Pokemon base info. Then we just need to do the other one. So roll IVs, uh, roll final stats, move slots, like so. We can compile all that. Um, we will need to also, oh gosh, we also will need to have another input here 
and this will be um, Pokemon name, and that will just be type name, and this will go into that. Like so. Let's keep it straight. And that's kind of the basic uh, setup. Then all we need to do is uh, we need to get our enemy team. We need to also set up one more thing. Sorry. Set up a new variable. Uh, I keep saying Ringmon, it's Pokemon. We need to set up one single um, Pokemon party info. And we'll call this Encounter Pokemon. We're going to get this. We're also going to get the uh, enemy team. And we're going to add. And what we're adding is that this, and this will make sense, I'm sure. So we need to add this Pokemon to our team, uh, our enemy team. And to do that, basically this information will all feed into this encounter Pokemon. And then it will add it to the team right at the end. And then the last thing we'll need to do is call our battle start function, which we're going to create in a future episode. So the next episode is going to focus on setting up all these informations. And then the next episode after that will basically be setting up the battle world and all the other kind of cool things. Um, hopefully you found this useful. Uh, hopefully it's all making sense and flowing cor correctly. But obviously, if you have any questions, if you're a member at this point, ask in the member section. Uh, uh, I'll be more than happy to kind of talk you through things. And um, if you're watching this way down the line, we have a help section in the Discord as well for, for everyone else to utilize as well. So I'll be more than happy to talk you through it. Uh, but hopefully it's all making sense. But but my only thing I would say is test as you go. Don't wait until you've done all the code and then test because the likelihood is, is it won't won't work. But as you saw me doing today, I tested the chosen encounter. And then I also tested to make sure we were getting the right data row out as well. Uh, and also naming conventions. Just make sure your names are case sensitive and correct for every Pokemon, for every section. Otherwise there'll be a missing link and it'll take you forever to find it. So just test as you go and just make sure you're getting it right first time. Otherwise, a game like this is, is very difficult. But thank you so much, guys, for watching. Uh, and I'll see you in the next episode. Much love. Take care. Bye.